of praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called the spirit of manipulation. That's tonight's topic. The spirit of manipulation. Let's open up. Let's open up with the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1. Luke 17, verse 1. Let's start there. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Go ahead. But woe unto him through whom they come. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, it is impossible. It's impossible that offenses will come. So the Lord is telling us that there will be offenses in this walk. From brothers and sisters, it says, there will be offenses in this walk. It says, but woe unto him through whom they come. Why? Because the offenses, they come from those that are offended. You understand? The offense is not going to come if you're not offended by something that somebody did. You can go to the scriptures to deal with that thing. Watch this. Give me that in Matthew 11, verse 6. Matthew chapter 11, verse 6. Let's read that. Okay. What Christ said about this thing. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You see what Christ is saying? It says, and blessed is he whomsoever shall not be offended in him. Because if you are offended in Christ, it means you don't believe on the Messiah. That means you only believe certain things and the rest you don't believe. So you don't believe, period. Because you can't be in the middle. You understand? So let's get that in James. Because Christ spoke about this thing. You can't be in the middle. Get that in James chapter 1. Okay, verse 6. James 1 verse 6. Let's read that. The book of James chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Wait. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. You see what it's saying right there? It says, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. What is the wind? Get that in Hebrews 13 verse 9. Let's see what is the wind that will drive you to and fro. Okay? Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 9. Come on. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. You see what it's saying? Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. So these strange doctrines, right? Watch this. Give me that in Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read verse 13. Ephesians 4. You know what? Read, read verse 14. Ephesians 4, 14. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Come on. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed mm -hmm. to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. With what? And carried about with every wind of doctrine. You see what it's saying? It says carried about with every wind of doctrine. So the wind that the apostle James is explaining is going into what? The strange and diverse doctrines. Strange and diverse doctrines. That's what he's talking about right there. Read on. By the slight of men and mm. cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see that thing right there? It says, by the slight of men, meaning the trickery of men, cunning and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in way to deceive, meaning the way to deceive your mind, your spirit, to defile. That's what the Lord is saying, to defile your way of thinking. Okay, let's go back. Go back now to where we was at. Okay, look. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1. You know what? Let's finish that in James. Let's finish that in James. Go back to James real quick. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 6. Go ahead. But let him, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth mm. is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. You see that? So he that wavereth, meaning he that is double-minded, Okay, he that is double-minded, that's what he's going into. It says, 
He that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So the wind is the wind of doctrines. It's talking about philosophies. Man made the men made imaginations, the imaginations of men. That's what he's talking about right there. Let's go back now. Let's go back to Luke chapter 17, verse 1 again. Luke 17, verse 1. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1. Come on. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Mm -hmm. But woe unto him through whom they come. It says, It's impossible. So you are going to have offenses. And those that bring offenses is those that are offended. Understand that thing. You understand? But it says, but woe unto him through whom they come. Meaning destruction unto that man or that woman who brings offenses. Because the offenses, what, are, what, what is the offenses? What are they offending? Watch this. That's, which is the reason why they are offended is because of this right here. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 real quick. Okay, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 12. Remember what we read in Ephesians 4, 14. He says, where they lie in wait to deceive. Now read that. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 12. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous. Mm -hmm. Because he is not for our turn. Meaning what? He doesn't move like we move. You understand? He doesn't think like we think. He does not. He does not. Uh, he does not associate himself with us. That's what he's saying, right? And he is clean, contrary to our doings. You see that thing? Meaning is what he's keeping God's commandments, right? He abetted us with our offending the law. You see what he's saying right there? He says he upbraided us with our offending the law because the righteous, by just by their actions, they are going to what? They are going to make those that don't want to keep God's commandments is going to make them to hate them. Just by you applying the laws, the God's laws, because really that's how you're going to aggravate those that don't want to change. When you apply the laws of the Most High God, there's a change in your life. Guess what's going to happen? It will offend those that are around you who don't want to change. They are the ones that are going to bring offenses because they are offended by what God's laws. Read that part again. He says he upbraided. He upbraided us with our offending the law. Read. And objected to our infamy and transgression, the transgressions of our education. He says he objected to our infamy, the transgressions of our education. Why? Because they, they were educated but they did not apply what they've learned. That's what he's saying. They knew the law, but they didn't apply it. So they hated those that did apply the law. You see that thing? Hence why they brought offenses, because they were offended. You see that thing right there? Get that in Proverbs 12, verse 26. Let's get some examples, okay? Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 26. Watch this thing. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, Verse 26. Read. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth him. You see what he's saying? So the way of the wicked is talking about who? Your neighbor who does not want to keep the commandments of the Lord, who is offending, who is offended, you understand, and brings offenses to the brothers and sisters. That's what he's talking about right there. Read again verse 26. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Read. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, mm. but the way of the wicked seduces them. You see that thing? The way of the wicked will seduce the righteous because the righteous will constantly be a testament against the ones that don't want to keep the laws, those that are rebellious. You understand? So now they will always try to find a way to do what? To seduce the righteous. Get that in Sirach 33, verse 14. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 14. Okay, watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 33, verse 14. Read. Good is set against evil. Mm -hmm. 
and life against death. Wait. So is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the against the godly. You see what the Bible is saying? Good is said is, is as good is set against evil. That's why it says the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked will seduce you. You understand? So that's what he's saying. He says, and life against death, so is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the godly. Read on, verse 15. Watch this. Let's see how the Lord set things up on this earth. Come on. Verse 15. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two, one mm -hmm. against another. You see that? He says the works of the Lord is positive and negative. The works of the Lord is what? Is the good and the evil. The sinner against the righteous. You understand? That's how the Lord created things on this earth. Those that will vibrate in the spirit of Satan and those that will vibrate in the spirit of the Lord. It is what it is. But that's why, that's why it says, go back to Luke now. Okay? Read Luke again. Luke 17 verse 1 again. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 1. Read. Then said he unto the disciples, mm -hmm. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Read. But woe unto him through whom they come. You see what he's saying? But destruction unto him through whom they come, meaning death and death and destruction to whom the offense cometh. Why? Because the reason why they bring offenses is because they are offended. The root of bitterness has sprung up in them. That's why they bring offenses because they are offended at what? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 12 again. So I understand Lord, what, is, what is the thing that is bringing the offense? You understand? What is making them to be offended? Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 12. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 12. Read. Therefore let us lie in wait for the righteous. Mm -hmm. Because he is not for our turn. Come on. And he is clean contrary to our doings. He is clean. He is what? He is clean. He is clean contrary to our doings. Give me that in John 15. Okay, John 15 verse 3. Let's see how he was clean. What made him to be clean? What made him to be spotless? Okay, read that. John 15 verse 3. The book so we understand. John. What King Solomon is saying right here. Come on. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 3. Read. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You see that? Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Ye are clean through the word. Clean through the word. The word of God is what cleanses your spirit. So let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 2, verse 12. Come on. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, mm -hmm. because he is not for our turn. Right. And he, and he is clean contrary to our doings. He is clean contrary to our doings. Meaning what? He kept God's commandments. He is clean from all filthiness of the flesh and of the mind. Right. He upbraided us with our offending the law. Now he's able to say, listen, but you're offending the law in, by your conduct, your speech, your behavior, the way you dress, how you eat, all of that, you are offending the law. You see that thing right there? Meaning you are not applying it. Go ahead. An objective to our infamy, the transgressions of our education. The transgression, the transgressing of our education. Because why? Because they knew the law. So they decided to transgress the laws anyway, although they knew it. That's why he says the transgressings of our education, because they knew the commandment, but they chose not to apply it. You see what well, that's what he's saying right there. Now go back to Luke now. Luke 17, read verse 2. This is the judgment for those that bring offenses because they are offended. Why? Because they are not applying God's commandments to their life. They are not applying. Okay, read. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 2. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, then 
than that he should offend one of these little ones. You see what Christ is saying? He says it's better for him, for, for him that a millstone be hang around his neck and thrown into the ocean, into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. We are the little ones, you understand? We are the little ones in this truth. So Christ is saying, the one that is bringing offenses, you understand, is because they are offended. Why? Because they don't apply. And that right there, that's the characteristics of a sociopath, okay? That's the master manipulator. Those that don't apply God's commandments, they are easily offended and they bring offenses. Why? Because they don't apply God's commandments. That's a master manipulator. That's a manipulator right there. That's the spirit of manipulation. That Negro right there, you have to watch like a hawk. Okay? Read again. Verse 2. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 2. Read. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and mm. he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Now, that's heavy right there. That's, the, that's the, our Lord and Savior. Out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay, watch this. Now give me Acts, okay? Give me Acts 20, verse 28. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. You know what? Acts. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Acts 20. Yeah, read Acts 20. Read Acts 20. Read Acts 20. There's somewhere I want to go, actually. But read Acts 20. Read it. Acts 20, verse 28. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Come on. Take heed therefore unto yourselves mm -hmm. and to all the flock Read. over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. So now, right now, what we're reading right here, the Apostle Paul is warning the churches, is as take heed. What does it mean to take heed? Okay, let me share my screen so we get the understanding of this thing. It says, take heed. Watch this thing. Okay, let's understand what that means, to take heed. Okay, so read that. The definition of heed. Mm -hmm. Verb. Come on. Pay attention to, take notice of. You see that? To take heed means to pay attention to or take notice of. Okay, now read the, read the similar words right there. Similar words. Pay attention to. Read. Take notice of. Mm. Take note of. Take note of. Okay, read that. Bear in mind. Bear in mind. Bear in mind. Okay, come on. Take into account. Take into account. Watch this. Now read that. Observe. Observe. Observe and pay attention. Don't be sleeping up in here. You understand? That's why they tell you men and women, don't sleep. Okay? Now read that. The noun. Read Definition that. of heed. Noun. Mm -hmm. Careful attention. Careful attention. So what the Apostle Paul is saying, take careful attention, meaning pay attention to, take notice of, okay? That's what he's saying right there. Okay, read that. Similar words. Attention. Mm. Notice. Read. Note. Come on. Regard. Regard. Come on. Attentiveness. Attentiveness. Read. Consideration. Consideration, come on. Thought. Mm. Care. Care. All of what we're reading, that's what the Apostle Paul is teaching us. You understand? He taught us back then. He's teaching us in these last days to take heed. Okay? Now watch this. Read the verse again now. Read the verse again. Acts 20 verse 28. Read. The book of Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Come on. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to mm -hmm. all the flock over Wait. the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers mm -hmm. to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So now watch this. It says, take heed, meaning take account of, pay attention to, unto yourselves and to all the flock. 
So he's saying, watch yourself, examine yourself. That's what he's going into when he says, take heed. Not only must you take examine yourself, but you must examine the church. Make sure that everybody's in order. They all believe and agree and they are applying what is written in this book. Because if they don't, they are what? Right there, that's a sign of disloyalty right there. Because if they don't apply, that right there, those are, those are, those are beginning stages to exit. You understand? So the Apostle Paul is, is warning us, it says to yourself, and to all the flock. You understand? That's some heavy, that's some heavy stuff right there. Give me the book of Second Peter's, okay? This is how you take that's this is how you take heed. Second Peter's chapter 1, verse 10. This is how you take heed, like the apostle Paul is teaching us. Okay, read that. Second Peter's 1, verse 10. First book of Peter's chapter 1, verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren. Mm -hmm. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Come on. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. You see what? Ye shall never fall. So he's saying, the apostle Peter said, listen, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. What does the word diligence mean? Let's get the definition of that so we understand. Because these are not regular words that we use on a daily. So we need to look somewhere up. Okay, read that. Diligence. Read it. The definition of diligence. Mm -hmm. Noun. Come on. Careful and persistent work or effort. You see what it say? Careful and persistent work or effort. When it comes to what? When it comes to your calling and your election. Because the Lord called us into this truth. You understand? The Lord elected us to get our minds right and to, uh, to be an example to our brothers and sisters who don't have this book, who don't have the laws, statutes, and commandments, who don't know who they are. So in on more, not only that, but to, what? to take it for yourself and to all the flock. Because you labor not for yourself only. You understand? So now let's get some synonyms, okay? Mm. No, no, let's keep it simple because... Um, you know, attentiveness, you see that? Read that. Similar. Attentiveness. Attentiveness. So, so what are we, what we, where did we just read that? So attentiveness, diligence is to take heed. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Okay, read that. Perseverance. Perseverance, okay, come on. Persistence. Persistence, okay, read. Tenacity. Tenacity. Now read the thing right there. Zeal. Come on. Zeal. Zeal. Fire. Okay, come on. Dedication. 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 Okay, read the next word. Commitment. 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 Now, let's read that. Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Laboring. Okay, come on. Read that thing right there. I like that word. Application. Let's read. Let's click there. I want you to read definition two. The definition of application, noun. Come on. The action of putting something into operation. You see that thing right there? Action. The action of putting something into operation. You understand? So diligence, action, okay, application, they all go hand in hand. They are all synonymous. That's what the Lord is saying right there. They are all synonymous. Now read that. Read that. Similar. Mm. Implementation. Impli what? Implementation. Implementation. Okay, now read that. Applying. 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 Mm. That's beautiful right there. Okay, read that. Practical use or relevance. Practical use or relevant. Meaning what? You apply God's commandments and you always stay relevant of what's going on currently 
You understand? So you are dealing with what's going, what we're dealing with on a day to day. What's happening in 2021, 2022, and so on and so forth. You are always up to date of what's going on. Relevance. And you use this, you use the Bible, you use what's going on in the, in the earth, what's going on around you to, to prove that the Bible is a true book. You see that thing right there? Application. Not only that, yourself, because the first person that you must rebuke is yourself. You understand? The man and woman in the mirror. Okay? Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Okay, that's it on that. Now read 2 Peter again. 2 Peter 1 verse 10. Read that thing again. 2 Book of Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Read. Wherefore the rather, brethren, mm. give diligence to make your calling and election sure. It says, take, it says what? Give diligence. Okay. Hard work, persistent hard work. So the Lord says we must do that. We must take persistent hard work to make our calling and our election sure. Because we have a more sure word of prophecy, which is who? Jesus the Christ, the righteous. Okay. He says, because if you do these things, you shall never fall. This is not an opinion. You understand? This is a fact. How do you do that? Get that in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Let's read that. 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. So how do, you, how do you make sure that you make your calling and election sure? Let's read that. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. Read. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Mm -hmm. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you notice the word that is being used here. It's a study, okay, to show. You study in order for you to show yourself to be approved unto God. How are you going to show yourself to be approved if you're not applying? You will never be able to exhibit anything if you didn't put work behind it. If there was no application behind it, there must be application so you can show it. You understand that? To glorify your father which is in heaven. Then it says, a workman. That means this person is laboring. You see that thing? They are applying God's laws to their life. That's what we read in here. A white man that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's how you make sure that you stay relevant. You understand? You apply that which is written. That's the only way the Most High God says, okay, if you do these things, you shall never fall. Okay? Now watch this. Go back to Acts chapter 20. Acts 20 verse 28. Read that again. The book of Acts chapter 20 verse 28. Come on. Take heed therefore unto yourselves mm -hmm. and to all the flock Come on. over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. So now watch this. You see that part right there says and to all the flock. He says take heed unto yourselves Okay, and to all the flock. Who's the flock? Get that in Ezekiel. Okay, the flock. He says, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. The Lord says, the Holy Ghost has made us overseers over ourselves and over the flock. Okay, Ezekiel 34 verse 6. Let's get that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34 verse 6. My sheep wandereth through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. You see what he's saying? He's telling you no, he's letting you know that the flock is the sheep. He says, my sheep wandered through all the mountains, okay, and upon every high hill. Because in all these mountains, what was they doing? They were worshiping idols. That's why he says, and upon every high hill. The mountains, they go into what? They go into these philosophies that our enemies have set up. In those philosophies, God says our people, they are worshiping idols. That's the high hill. He says, yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. So the sheep is the flock. You understand? Matthew 15, 24. So we understand what he's talking about. 
the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the sheep, the flock is all making reference to the house of Israel. Okay, that's what he's saying right there. So go back. Go back to Z, I mean, um, Acts. Go back to Acts. Okay. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Read. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves mm -hmm. and to all the flock. Right. Over the which the Holy Ghost has made thee, has made you overseers. Right. To feed the church of God, which he mm -hmm. has purchased with his own blood. So now, what I want you to see with this verse, then I'm going to stay a little bit on this verse. It says, and to all the flock, which is the 12 tribes of Israel, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Remember the Holy, what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is God's laws. Okay, the spirit of Christ. Okay, it says, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Now, give me the book of Jeremiah 23, verse 4. Give me Jeremiah 23, verse 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. We shall what? We shall feed them. The Lord says, he says, I will set shepherds over them, which shall feed them. You understand? The real shepherd. Okay. He says, I'm going to set shepherds over what? Over the flock. We shall feed the flock. Go ahead. And they shall fear no more. Mm -hmm. Nor be dis dismayed. Come on. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Now, do you see that? He says, they're not going to fear, they're not going to be afraid. Meaning what? They're not going to worship idols, nor be dismayed, meaning confused. Neither shall they be lacking. They're not going to lack knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, saith the Lord. Why? Because the Lord will send the real shepherds that will feed the flock. Okay, give that in Jeremiah 3.15. Same book. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Let's read that real quick. Okay. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, mm -hmm. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You see what these we see what the shepherds will do? You see what the pastors will do? They will the real pastors, the real shepherds that the Lord will send after his own heart. It says they're gonna feed the flock with knowledge and with understanding. You understand? Why? Because when they are given knowledge and they are given understanding. Here's what's not going to happen. So go back to Jeremiah 23, verse 4. You understand? They will have this thing right here. When they are fed with knowledge and understanding. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 4. Go ahead. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more. Mm -hmm. Nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. He said, they are not going to lack. The Lord says, we are not going to lack. So, because the Lord will send the real shepherds in, in his spirit, you understand? And they will only speak by him. That's what the Lord is saying. So, when the Mosaic God says, okay, I'm going to feed you with knowledge and understanding, what is he saying? He is telling you, that you're not going to fear. You know, meaning you're not going to worship other gods. Let's get that. Psalms 11 and 10. Psalms 11 and 10, when he says, they shall not what? He says, and they shall fear no more. Okay, Psalms 111 verse 10. Let's read that so we understand what he's saying right there. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Read. His praise endureth forever. Oh, praises. So he's saying, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. So when the real shepherds feed the flock, guess what's going to happen? They are not going to, they are not going to fear. Because what they will, what they're not going to fear, meaning they're not going to worship other gods. But they will do what? 
they will have a good understanding of the things that are written because they are going to be fed with knowledge and understanding. The negative of that is get that in Isaiah 29. Okay, so we understand what I, what um, King David is saying here and what Jeremiah, what, uh, Jeremiah is saying there. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 29. Let's read verse 13. Okay, Isaiah 29 verse 13. The book of Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Wait. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. Come on. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. You see what he's saying? And their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. So their understanding, it goes into that. Because if they fear towards God, meaning their understanding towards God is taught by men, the imagination of men, guess what? They are going to be confounded. They are going to have lack. Like we read in Ezekiel. They are, they are going to have lack. Unlike we read in, 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 in uh, Jeremiah. So what, the, what is the Lord teaching us? The Lord is teaching us that the true pastors and the shepherds that care for the flock, you understand? Not hirelings. They care for the flock. Guess what they will do? They will feed the people with knowledge and understanding so that the people are not confounded, the people are not confused, nor manipulated. Because the spirit of manipulation is what? The spirit of manipulation is the spirit of lack of accountability. Lack of taking responsibility. That's the spirit of manipulation. Lack of application. You understand? And the spirit of manipulation is what? Is the spirit of bringing offenses. The spirit of being offended. That's the spirit of manipulation. When you ever see brothers, they're causing problems. You understand? They are easily offended. That's a manipulator right there. Why? Because they don't apply the scriptures. They don't apply the scriptures. Is something small, they just get offended. That's a manipulator right there. That's a demon. Okay? That brother is manipulating. He's moving with the spirit of manipulation because instead of getting rid of that spirit, guess that well, they will not get rid of it. They will seal it. They will decorate it. You won't see it if you don't stand. You don't make, you don't take, you don't make your election, you're calling an election show. I'm paraphrasing it. If you don't do that, you are going to be manipulated. Understand? Okay. Now, watch this. Let's go back to Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, Wait. chapter 23, verse 4. Read. And I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. Mm -hmm. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall be the lacking, saith the Lord. You see what the Lord is saying? So if the real shepherds are there, guess what? The people are not going to lack. The people are not going to worship other gods. They are not going to be dismayed. Neither will they be lacking because they will, have, they will be filled with the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of Christ. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Now watch this. Get me the book of Ezekiel now, okay? Give me Ezekiel chapter 34, read verse 1. So now the opposite of that, when... The, the shepherds are not the real shepherds, okay? They are not the real shepherds, okay? Read that. Ezekiel 34, verse 1. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 1. Read. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Read. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Mm -hmm. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Mm -hmm. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Meaning what? They're about themselves. Not about the nation, not about the people. They're about themselves. You understand? They're about themselves. Jump down to verse, now read verse 8. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 8. Mm -hmm. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey mm -hmm. and my flock became meat to every beast of the field. 
meaning the nations and their philosophies and their idols they worship. Read. Because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. You see that thing? They did not care about the people. One thing that you need to understand when you come in Israel and you want, you say you want to be a leader in Israel, you want to serve the most High God, you want to be a servant in Israel, and then you evolve into a leader. Guess what? You need to care about the people. You need to have the love for the people. You understand? And among the people that the Lord will send in, there are going to be those that will be what that will use their brethren in the congregation. They will manipulate them. You understand? Particularly with scriptures. They will use scriptures to manipulate brothers and sisters in the congregation. That's why it says, make your calling and election sure. You study to show yourself approved. You understand? You always make sure that you counsel before every action to make sure that a brother will not talk to you and deceive you with a precept. Understand that, okay? Read that thing again, verse 8. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, verse 8. Come on. As I live, said the Lord God, mm -hmm. surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, Read. Because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock. But the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. You see that they, didn't, they, they did not care about the people. That's what he's saying. They didn't care about the nation. They did not care. That's what the Lord is saying, right? Meaning they didn't love the people. They, didn't, they, did, not have, they did not push the gospel into the spirit of sincerity and truth. Now watch this. Um, now go back to Acts, okay? Give me Acts chapter 20, verse 28 again. Let's go back there to that verse, okay? Read what you got. The book of Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Come on. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock mm -hmm. over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. Right? To feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. You see that thing? The part that I want to also focus on, it says, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. The, the, the Spirit of Christ, because of the Spirit of Christ, we are, now, we are now what overseers over ourselves and over the flock, because we also have to examine ourselves and get our minds right to make sure that the congregation also, the flock, they are fed. You understand? So they can be healthy. They can be fit for the trials, the temptations, the mental hang-ups, the afflictions that will come. So you have to be prepared for those things. You understand? Now watch this. Um, give me the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter 8, verse 13. The Holy Ghost says, after our, our, of the, our, it says what? Over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Watch this. Give me that in wisdom of Solomon 8, verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 13. Read. Moreover, by the means of her, I shall obtain immortality mm -hmm. and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. So the hair is wisdom in verse one. Go ahead. I shall set the people in order. I shall want the nations. I shall set the people in order. That's what, that's what, that's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Spirit of the Lord is going to allow you to set the men and women in order in the spirit of Christ. That was as I shall set the people in order. Go ahead. And the nations shall be subject unto me. And the nations are going to be subject unto us because we will rule over them and teach them God's laws. That's what he said right there. Give me that in Sirach 10. Okay. Ecclesiasticus. Watch this. Sirach chapter 10 verse 14. Watch this thing right here. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 14. Read. The Lord hath cast down the thrones of proud princes. Let's talk about and the nations that will be called on. That's the nations that are going to be subject unto us, which now, right now, they are ruling over us because of our sins. Read. And set up the meek in their stead. 
You see that thing? The Lord will set up the meek in their stead, meaning those that humble down to the Bible and follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They, I said, the Lord says, he will set us up. You understand? He's going to destroy the thrones of proud princes, meaning these other nations, and he's going to set us, the meek, those that keep the commandments, he says, then you will inherit the kingdom. You will beg, you'll be delivered on that day. That's what he's saying. And the nations will be subject unto us. Now go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 8. Chapter 10. Chapter 8, no, verse 14. Eight. Come on. I shall set the people in order, and mm. the nations shall be subject unto me. You see what happens? When we are when there is the people is the nation of Israel. You understand? The, the people is the nation, is the, is the 12 tribes. The nations is the heathens that will be subject unto us because they are our subjects. We're going to be what? Lords over them. You understand? Because of what? Because of wisdom. Wisdom is the only reason why we will be able to do that thing. Understand that. Get, get that in chapter 9, verse 1. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. Read, O God, O God of my fathers, and Lord of mercy, who hath made all things with thy word. He made all things with his word, okay? Because the Lord spoke it, Christ made it. Go ahead. And ordained man through thy wisdom. You see what the Lord does? The Lord will set the meek. The Lord will set the, the meek in these last days when Esau's kingdom is destroyed. That's why it says, an ordained man through thy wisdom. The reason why the Lord is raising us up is not because of our good looks. It's not because of our good works. No, it's because the mercy of the Lord, the blood of the Lamb. That's why we are in this truth. The Lord called us in here so that he can what? So he, we can glorify him. It's about him. Okay, go ahead. That he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. You see that thing? Every bit of God's creation we should have what? Dominion over it, and they should be subject unto us. Because of what? Because of the wisdom the Lord has poured upon Jacob. Read verse 3. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. Mm -hmm. And execute judgment with an upright heart. Because currently right now on the earth, this is not happening. This right here is not happening in the earth. Is not going on, and because of that, that's why we have so that's why the world is the way that it is. So much evil and wickedness on this earth because the 12 tribes of Israel we have not taken our rightful place yet. We have starting to because we are waking up, you understand, getting our minds right because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You understand, once we take over the earth, it's a wrap, there will be peace on this earth. Okay, now let's go back to X now, X20. Acts chapter 20, verse 28 again. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Read. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves mm -hmm. and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. You see that thing? To feed the church of God. With what? With knowledge and understanding, which he had purchased with his own blood. Get that in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Because Christ died. You understand? He died for the 12th. He died for us. So what he went through, we must go through that thing. The trial. I mean, we also must go through our own trials, just like he did. There's no escape in this. Okay? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Let's read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 19. Come on. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, mm -hmm. which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? We are not our own. We lost that right when we broke God's commandment and Christ had to come to die for us to give us a chance to get the kingdom. Read. For you were brought to the for you were bought with the price. You were what? For you were bought with the price. We were bought with the price. Okay, come on. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, 
which are God's. Because that's what Christ did. He glorified the Mosai God in his body and in his spirit, which belong to the Mosai. So likewise, we must do the same. So when we were bought with the price, that's when Christ died for the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? So the Lord redeemed us through his only begotten son so that we may be able to do what? To have a chance to get the kingdom. Okay, now go back to Acts now. Acts 20, read verse 29 now. Acts 20, verse 29. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 29. Come on. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Read that again. Read that thing again, verse 29. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 29. Mm -hmm. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So the Apostle Paul is telling us, remember verse 28, we went through all these precepts to understand. The Apostle Paul is setting the scene for us. He says, because I know this, that after my departing, how did he know? The Lord showed him this thing and he saw it when he was traveling to various churches to teach the gospel and so forth. It says, for I know this, that after my departure, because the apostle Paul, he knew that he, 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 the time will come when it's going to be time for him to go. Meaning what? The father will take him. You understand? So he's saying, after my departure, let's get there in Timothy, because he says something similar to Timothy. Let's get there. Okay, get that in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. Watch this. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 5. Read. Right. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy, of thy ministry. So now he's giving Timothy a charge. He said, listen, but watch, meaning take heed. He's telling him the same thing. Take heed thou in all things, meaning what? You must take notice of everything. Pay attention. Don't be ignorant. That's what he's telling him. You understand? Enjoy afflictions because afflictions will come. Temptations will come. Trials will come. You must enjoy them. He says, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Now, you see that part right there? That part right there. What is he saying? Protect the doctrine. Make sure that the, 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 the purity of the doctrine remain the way that I've delivered it unto you. Get that in 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Why is he particularly making sure of the ministry right there? Make full proof of the ministry, meaning the doctrine. Protect the doctrine. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Because he knew there's going to be wicked Negroes that are going to creep in to try to change the doctrine to manipulate brothers and sisters in the congregation using scriptures. You understand? That's to change the doctrine, contrary to what they have learned. I'm going to get that next. Read that for me. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11 verse 1. Read. Be ye followers of me, even mm. as I also am of Christ. Because the apostle Paul, he followed the footsteps of the Messiah. Get that in uh, Revelation 14, verse 4. Real quick. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 4. Come on. These are they which were not defiled with women. Come for on. For they were virgins. For they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. They do what? These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. He says, these are they, the they is talking about the elect. He's making reference to the elect. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Meaning what? Who's the Lamb? That's Christ. Okay. So, these are they which will, whatever the Bible said, they are not going to make excuse. They, will, they, will, they are going to apply. Notice I'm using that word there. They are going to apply. Because they understand, if I don't apply, 
definitely I'm going to be a master manipulator. You understand that? I will de I definitely, I will be moving in the spirit of manipulation because I'm not applying what is written. I just make it seem like I do, but I don't apply it. You understand? Clouds they are, but without rain. You see that thing right there? They are, look good, but inwardly, they are full of dead men's bones. You see that? So, let's go back. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 5. Read. But watch thou in all things, mm -hmm. endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. See, he's commanding him, he says, listen, you better make sure that you make full proof of this ministry, meaning protect it. Protect the flock. You understand? Make sure that you keep the commandments so the Lord can cover you and protect you. Look after the people. They were men, women, and children. And make full proof of your ministry. Protect the doctrine. That's why some of you, you be saying stuff. I'm like, mm -mm, that ain't correct. Because I know somebody else that don't understand what's coming up, they will, they will, they will, what? They will just take that and run with it. That's why the Apostle Paul had to tell Timothy, make full proof of thy ministry. You understand? He's telling him that. Why? Because here's what would happen. Get that in Romans. You understand? This is when the Apostle Paul was in house arrest. You understand? In Rome. Now he was, he wrote a letter to the Romans. Okay? Our forefathers scattered in Rome. Here's what he said. Get that in Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 17. Come on. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid mm -hmm. them. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, mark them which cause divisions. So because the people that bring offenses, they are the ones that bring divisions in the congregation. They are the ones that are moving with the spirit of Cain just to manipulate everyone. You understand? And, but they're using the Bible to do it though. That's why the Lord says, mark them. Meaning what? Point them out. Put them on blast. Rebuke them sharply. So they don't want, they don't come up here and mess things up. What the Lord is trying to build. You understand? It says, mark them which cause divisions and offenses. The division that they are causing, you understand? And offenses that they are bringing the objective of it is to go against the doctrine which we have learned. That's the point of it. You understand? Which we have learned. And do what? What's that last word? And do what to them? And avoid them. And avoid them. Meaning, stay away from them. That's what the Lord is saying. That's why it says, make full proof of your ministry. You understand? Keep reading. Verse 18. Read them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning what? These but are not the real shepherds. These are hirelings. You understand? These are wicked Negroes who don't care about the nation. They don't care about the state of our nation. They don't care about that. Read. But their own belly. But their own belly. They only care about themselves. It's about them. Read on. And by good works and fair speeches, Deceive the hearts of the simple. You see that thing? Good words. He says, by what? And by good words. Not the words of the Bible, although they might use the Bible, but they don't really use the words of the Bible because they don't apply it. So it doesn't hold weight. You see what he's saying? It says, and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Meaning what? If you are simple-minded, void of understanding, you are going to be deceived because you are the simple one. You understand? You are the simple one. So go back to 2 Timothy 4, verse 5 again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But watch thou in all things, and your afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, protect the doctrine. Go ahead. For I am now ready to be offered. Mm -hmm. And the time of my departure is at hand. 
You see what he's saying? The time of my departure is at hand. Meaning what? I'm about to go now. I'm about to go back home when the Lord is calling. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. But he's telling Timothy, he said, listen, make sure you make full proof of your ministry. Okay? So he's saying the same thing. Go back to Acts now. Acts 20, verse 29. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 29. Read. Really? For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous mm -hmm. wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. If these grievous wolves are going to enter in among you, they are not going to give a damn about the people. They're not going to care about the women, the, the sisters in the camp. They're not going to care about the children. They are not going to care about the brethren. Because they are causing divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. You see that thing? Read that again, verse 29. Because I want two brothers to understand what's coming up to you. And you sisters as well. Pay close attention. You understand? You have to make sure that you pay attention to what somebody says. You must listen in. Why? Because we need to understand. They will bring you a precept. But the way they break it down, you're like, but. You know the way this, this brother is saying this? You know, we never learned that in class. Where is he getting this stuff from? Why is he speaking like this? That This thing that he's saying is contrary to the doctrine. You understand? You have to be able to pay attention. Read that thing again, verse 29. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 29. Read. For oh, I know this. That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And there is generally, you know, right there it says, shall grievous wolves. It's not may saying maybe. No, they are going to come in. They are, are going to enter in among you. You understand? Not sparing the flock. Who's the flock? The 12 tribes of Israel, the church, the congregation, the sons and daughters of the Most High God. They are not going to spare them. Can you imagine the type of Negro this is? Because he's using the word sparing. He says, not sparing the flock. He's not going to spare them. He meaning what? He's not going to have mercy on the people. He doesn't care which manipulates because he don't care. She don't care. I need, especially you men, I need you brothers to understand this thing. Watch this. Here's the objective of it. Get that in Sirach 22. Mm. Ecclesiastes 22, read verse 10 for me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 22, verse 10. Read. But children, being haughty, through mm. disdain and want of nurture, do stand the nobility of their kindred. Because we read this scripture all the time, but I want to show you something about this verse right here. It says, but children being haughty, they are proud, high-minded, they think they know everything. A child who thinks they know everything, that's an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. A child who thinks they know everything because it's impossible. The child don't know anything. You understand? It says, through disdain and want of nature, do stain the nobility of their kindred. I want to deal with that part, nobility. What is that? What is nobility? Mm. Let's get some definitions, okay? Let's understand what is what is that. Read the definition, nobility. Read that. Definition of nobility. Mm. Now, the quality of being noble in character. The quality of being noble in character. So let's get some simple words, what it means, okay? Read. Similar. Virtue. Virtue goes into character, okay? Yes, read that. Read the definition of virtue. The definition of virtue, noun, behavior showing high moral standards. That's virtue right there. Character, when it comes to these laws. Integrity, basically. Behavior showing high moral standards. Okay, come on. Read that. Similar. Read that one. Righteousness. Righteousness. That's biblical. Okay, read. Integrity. Integrity. Okay, come on. Dignity. Dignity. 
So integrity, you read about that in the book of Job. Okay, watch this. Right there. Uprightness. Uprightness. Okay, read. Honorability. Honorability. Read on. Honor. Honor. Now read that. Decency. Decency. That's in the scriptures. Okay, read. Respectability. Respectability. Go ahead. Nobility. 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 Now let's go back. Okay. Let's go back. Read the definition again of nobility. The definition of nobility. Mm -hmm. The quality of being noble in character. The quality of being noble in character. Okay. Virtue. Read that. Similar. Virtue. Virtue. That goes into nobility. Integrity. Character. Read. Goodness. Goodness. Come on. Honor. Honor. Mm. Read. Honesty. You see, these are like... Uh, these are foreign ways to the mind of the Negro. Okay. These words that we're reading right here, virtue, goodness, honor, honesty. Okay, go ahead. Decency. Decency. Go ahead. Integrity. Okay, read that. Magnanim magnanimity. Magnanimity. Okay, that's not a regular Negro way. Let's click it. Whoops. There seem to be some network issues. Eh? Although it seems like I'm connected, but I seem to be having network issues. Eh? Okay, read that. Definition of magnanimity. Mm -hmm. The fact or condition of being magnanimous. Generosity. Generosity. Wow, look at that thing right there. Similar. Charity. Mm -hmm. Charity. Oh, with their charity, we're not talking about feeding homeless people. No. It's talking about loving your neighbor as yourself. Charity. You understand? You love your neighbor as yourself, guess what? Your neighbor is, is lacking. They keep the commandments. You will help them. That's very simple. Yeah. Okay, now, go back. Go back to um, let's go back. Let's let me go back a little bit. Okay. Okay, all praises, nobility. That's what that's really what we wanted to go into because we need to understand what does the word nobility mean. Read that again, the definition of nobility. The definition of nobility, uh -huh. the quality of being noble in character. The quality of being noble in character, okay, is a virtue, goodness, honor, honesty, decency, integrity. Magnanimity, generosity, selflessness, bravery. Okay. Now, that's it on there. Let me close that. Now, give me, give me Sarah 22 verse 10 again. Read verse 10 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 10. Read. But children being haughty through disdain mm -hmm. and want of nature do stain the nobility of their kindred. It says it through what? Through disdain and want through of nature. Through, through disdain. disdain. Disdain, disdain, disdain or want of nature. They do what now? Do stain the nobility of their kindred. Meaning they will poison, they will poison the integrity of their own brothers and sisters. This is a hateful Negro. You understand? This Negro right here is very manipulative, okay? Because the only reason why this manip the, the manipulative behavior is activated is because of what? Bitterness, jealousy, anger, hatred towards your brother or sister. You understand? Because you don't see, when you look at yourself and say, but me, I'm not progressing in this truth. What is going on? I'm not growing in this truth. What's the problem? Instead of self-examining, guess what you do? 
you start to you start to stain the nobility of your kin. You start to poison them. You start to stain them with your what? With your evils, with your demons. Because what? Because you, by so doing, you cause offenses in the camp. You are because you are offended. Why? Because you don't take responsibility. You don't take accountability. You understand? You always make excuses all the time. That's a master manipulator. You understand? But they can pull a precept. They will pull a precept though. You understand? Even though it doesn't line up, but they will pull it anyway. Why? Because they will manipulate you with scriptures like, you know, witchcraft. That's witchcraft right there. You understand? Now read the verse again, verse 10. I want to get a definition of, an, of a word here. Okay? Sarah 22, verse 10. Read that thing again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 22, verse 10. Read. But children being haughty through disdain and want of nurture, do stain the nobility of their kindred. The part we want to deal with is that part when it says, through disdain and want of nature. Disdain. What is the what is the definition of disdain? Let's get there. Now read the definition. Disdain. Read that thing for me. The definition of disdain. Noun. The feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. That's it right there. You see that part right there? It says the feeling that some the feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. Meaning what? You don't need to give due respect to someone. And I'm seeing that in the camp now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some brothers walking with the spirit of Satan. They have the spirit of disdain on them. I'm seeing that. You understand? I'm seeing that thing. Read that thing again for me. The definition of disdain. Now, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. So, and the reason why, the reason why it, the, 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 the Negro will have the spirit of disdain is what? They are haughty. What does that mean, haughty? Let's get the definition. Watch how this comes together. I'm going to show you something right here. Watch this thing. Okay. Watch how this comes together. Read what you got. Haughty. Read that. The definition of haughty. Adjective. Mm. Arrogantly superior and disdainful. You see that part right there? Arrogantly superior and disdainful. So haughty and disdain, they go hand in hand. They are synonyms. You understand? Now watch this. I want to show you something, right? Hmm. Yo, we, I can have multiple classes about this thing. You know what? The one I want. I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, read the definition here. The definition of proud. Read the Adjective. second definition. The second definition. Having or showing a high or excessively high opinion of oneself or mm -hmm. one's importance. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 10. Okay. I'm going to show you how this comes together. Sirach 10 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 10 verse 7. Pride is okay. hateful before God and man. Stop right there. It says pride is hateful. So haughty is, is being proud, right? Being haughty, is, it means being proud. So what we read in Sarah 22, when it says, um, I'm going to butcher it. Let me just, it says, but children being haughty through this day. The nobility, the nobility of their, their, their kindred. The reason why there was this they understand there is a spirit of pride, right? Which is hateful. So on him, he's got this, he's got the spirit of hatred, and this Negro is toxic. This is a toxic Negro. This is a bitter Negro, right here. You understand? They are bitter and they are toxic. 
That means they will stain you with their toxicity and their bitterness. They, either they're going to want you to make you look like them or be like them or destroy you. When you're trying to get rid of your own demons, they're going to stop you and say, mm -mm. how are they going to stop you? They're going to speak evil of leadership because it's always the leadership. Because leadership is the ones that bring in scriptures. And if you are not moving in the right spirit, you will immediately be offended. It's not a matter of if or maybe it's when. When the scripture come out, you'll be offended immediately. You understand? Now, read verse 7 again. So like 10, verse 7. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 7. Go ahead. Pride is hateful before God and men. Mm -hmm. And by both doth one commit iniquity. You see that thing? Pride is hateful before God and men. You are going to, when you are prideful, guess what? You are going to be hateful. You are, you are, you are hateful before God and you are hateful before men. That's why he says, and by both, by both God and men, does one commit iniquity. You are committing iniquity against the Lord. You are also committing iniquity against your own brothers. So you don't apply the royal law. When you are moving in this spirit right here. You understand? Now let's go back. Strike 10. Strike 22 verse 10. Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 22, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But children being haughty through disdain and want of nature do stain the nobility of their kindred. They stain the nobility of their kindred. They are going to stain or defile or poison what? They are what? Their character, their spirit of integrity, sincerity, and in truth, they just want to destroy. They will quench that spirit. That's what the Lord is saying. Not only that, they will vex that spirit right there. Now, watch this. Um, give me, let's go, let, let's go to Matthew. You understand? Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Okay. Because I know some of you might have forgotten. Go back to X20. There's a word I want in there. Guess X20 verse 29. I'm going to spend some time in this chapter this day. Okay. Read that for me. The book of X. Chapter 20, verse 29. Go ahead. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. They're not going to spare the flock. Not sparing the flock. Okay. Now watch this. Get that in Matthew 7. Because it says, grievous wolves will enter in among you. Matthew 7, 15. These grievous wolves, I'm going to show you the word that Christ uses. These grievous, what are these grievous wolves? Watch this. Matthew 7, verse 15. Okay, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15. Read. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are, rav they are ravening wolves. Okay, read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Read the verse again. Read verse 15 again. Go ahead. Matthew, mm -hmm. chapter 7, verse 15. Great. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You see what Christ is calling them? The, so the false prophets, they come in what? In sheep's clothing. Meaning what? I'm going to explain what I mean, but what, what, what Christ is saying right there. It says, beware, meaning take heed. Take heed of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So these false prophets, they come in sheep's clothing because a sheep is a what type of animal? I mean, it's a very timid, non aggressive animal. You understand? But watch this chapter 19, might be verse 24. Strike 19 verse 25. Watch this thing. Read that for me. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 25. There is an exquisite subtlety, and the same is unjust. But there is mm -hmm. one that turneth aside to make judgment appear. And there is a wise Come man on. that testifieth in judgment. 
You see, the Lord is saying, he says, there's an exquisite subtlety. It's exquisite, right? He says, and the same is unjust. So it appears that it appears, it appears righteous because there's a precept that goes along with it. You understand? But the Lord is saying the same is unjust because why? The motive behind it is the problem. You understand? It says, and there is one that turneth aside to make judgment appear, meaning they bring problems. But listen what the Bible is saying. And there is a wise man that justifieth in judgment. The wise man will be justified in judgment. Now read the next verse. Watch this. Verse 26 now. Come on. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly, but mm -hmm. inwardly he is full of deceit. He is full of BS. Yeah, he's full of BS. That's what they is full of the devil. So he says, there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly. What does that mean? Remember what we read in Matthew 7. Go back to Matthew 7, 15. So we understand what he's saying right there. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15. Go ahead. Beware of false prophets which come mm -hmm. to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So now this is a false prophet. They don't believe the scriptures, but they come with one. It says, it says, which come to you in sheep's clothing. You see what the Sirach is saying? It says, this is a wicked man. The false prophet, these are wicked men. It says that hang it down his head, said, because they look what? They look innocent. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? He says, come to you in sheep's clothing. They hang their heads sadly, okay? But inwardly, they are what? They are ravening wolves. Now he says, but inwardly, he's full of deceit. He is going to manipulate you. Inwardly, he's full of Satan's devices on how to manipulate. Deceive. You see that thing? To stay in your, your what? To, this, to take you away from the doctrine that you have learned. They're going to teach you contrary to what you've learned already. You understand? To the things that you've learned when you came in. Then all of a sudden, there's all these precepts that have been thrown around. It's like, but because So you just agree because there's a precept was thrown out. But it doesn't make any sense, though. You understand? You can't tell, but you can tell mm, it's not making sense. So that's what is that's what we're reading here. Okay. Read go back to um Sirach 19:26 again. Read that verse again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 26. Come on. There is a wicked man that hangeth down his head, his head sadly, but inwardly he is full of deceit. You see that thing inwardly, meaning what? He's got basically they be putting masks on. They put a mask on. You understand? They have different masks that they put on because they, are, they have multiple personalities. They are crazy. Okay. Ray, verse 27. Casting down his countenance and making as if he had not. You see that thing right there? They're going to cast down their countenance, meaning what? They're going to appear that they're not, I'm listening, I hear, I see my faults and so forth. But he says he's going to cast down his countenance. You understand? He's going to have a long face. Okay. Making as if he had not, meaning he didn't hear you. Okay. Read on. Where he is not known, he will what? do him. Hold on. Where, where he says where he's not known, it's not, it's not just only talking about he's going to move to a different city. Because that also is true. But he's also talking about where he's not, where, where nobody's aware of him. Even in the congregation. In the congregation, it says, you are not aware of this Negro, how he moves. You understand? That's what it says, where he's not known, go ahead. Where he is not known, he will do the, he will do the mischief before, before thou be away. Meaning what? Before you, before, by the time you realize it, it's too late. Because why? He's a sociopath. Yeah, he's, he's a psycho. You understand? He's a psycho, he's a, he's, a, he's a psychopath and he's a sociopath. He will manipulate you. You understand? The people that manipulate, write this down. They don't take responsibility for their action. That's the first sign. Lack of accountability. 
Number two, excuses. They always make excuses. Number one, no accountability. Number two, they always make excuses. They will make excuses all the time. You understand? Number three, they lie. Okay? Yeah, they lie. They will lie to you. In your face, by the way. To your face. Okay? They don't take accountability. They make excuses. They lie. They bear false witness. They are very deceitful. You understand? I said the first one was, was what? They don't take responsibility, no accountability. They make excuses. That's number two. Number three, they lie. Number three, they, they, are what? they bring offenses. They are easily offended. No, write it down. No, so number four, they are easily offended. Number five, they bring offenses because they are offended. Number six, the spirit of bitterness. This is a master manipulator. They are bitter. You understand? They are always in competition. That's a master manipulator right there. They manipulate. That's a dangerous Negro. That's a dangerous Negro to be around. Okay? Because they are not here to build. Although they are here, but they are not here to build. They are here to destroy from within. I'm going to deal with that. Okay? Read verse 28. It's like 19, 28 now. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19, verse 28. Read. And if for want of power he be hindered from sinning, yet when he findeth opportunity, he will do evil. Now watch this. It says, and if for want of power he be hindered from sinning. Meaning what? He, does, he, he, he is not given power of authority. You understand? If he does not receive that power of authority so that he can be hindered from sinning, what does that mean? So he can learn. So he can get himself right. So he can examine oneself. It says, yet, when he, but when he finds the opportunity, while he's still supposed to learn, while you're still supposed to examine yourself, get your mind right, get your ish together, guess what? It says, when he finds the opportunity, he is going to do evil. It's not if, he says, he will do it. You see that thing right there? It says, but yet when he finds the opportunity, he is going to do evil. It meaning he's guaranteed he's going to do it. So he looks like, okay, I'm getting myself right, but he's not. He's just waiting for opportunity to do what? To do evil. That right there, that's a sociopath. That's a sociopath and a psychopath. You understand? He's full of the devil. I need you men to understand this thing. Sisters as well. Especially the sisters. Because you're the ones that are going to end up with men like this. You're going to end up with spirit like this because you don't listen to counsel. You are going to be manipulated. Very easily, by the way. You understand? The Negro will body bag you. Okay? Now watch this. Go back to Matthew. Matthew 7 verse 15. Read that for me. Matthew 7 verse 15. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 15. Read. Beware of false prophets, which Read. come to you in sheep's clothing. Read. But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. You see that thing? But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. So these ravening wolves, these are grievous wolves, not spending the flock. They are going to tear the flock in pieces. They are going to destroy them. They're going to destroy their souls. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? They are going to destroy the people because they don't love the people. Okay? Now watch this. Now read, go back to Acts now. Acts 20 verse 30. Acts chapter 20 and verse 30. Let's read that. The book of Acts chapter 20 verse 30. Mm -hmm. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away Disciples after them. Now, mm, that's heavy right there. Read verse 30 again for me. Read that thing again. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 30. Read. Also of your own selves shall men arise. Stop right there. It says, also of your own selves shall men arise. 
What is this talking about? The Lord is saying, this is the Apostle Paul speaking now in the Spirit of Christ says, also of your own selves shall men arise. What is he saying? He's saying, those men that are going to arise, that will speak perverse things to draw away disciples after them, meaning students, meaning followers, is not going to be somebody on the outside. No, it's talking about somebody in the congregation. And it's not talking about a newcomer, somebody that is less than six months in this troop, somebody that is less than a year. Mm, it's not talking about that type of brother or sister. It's talking about somebody that has been more, more, more than six months in the truth to a year, six months to a year. You understand? It also goes higher up in the level from the from the from the higher up that goes into the officer, that goes into the captain, that goes into the deacon, the bishop is making reference to those people because they have influence. You understand? They have influence in the congregation. So he's also he's saying that also of your own selves shall men arise. You understand? Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Because they have influence. A newcomer, somebody that is here for a month, nobody's going to listen to them. They just arrived. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. It's, it's not talking about somebody that just, yes. just walked in. No. Somebody that just it, it, or it's not saying somebody that walked in cannot manipulate the people. It's not saying that they can, but here in this verse, it's talking about it says what that's why it says also of your own selves. Verse 29 is talking about general people that just come in, they just cause confusion because. There's somebody that has been here for a while. They're supposed to know the scriptures, but they don't apply them. So somebody just comes in, malovanyana. So guess what they do? They are able to manipulate them and get them out the truth. Verse 30, though, is talking about those that has been what? Long laboring in this truth for a while. So that's talk about them. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Now watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 26, verse 20. Matthew 26, verse 20. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 20. Wait. Now when the evening was come, he sat mm -hmm. down with the twelve. So now this is during the time of the, the past. This is the Passover night. Okay. Go ahead. And as they did eat, he said, mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall be trained. That one of you is going to be trained. Okay, go ahead. And they were exceeding sor and they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? Because it was bothering them. Or who would be dumb enough to do something like this when we are building it? We are with the Lord. I mean, the Son of God is before us. So there's going to be one wicked Negro here that is going to be betray the Son of God. Are you kidding me? That's why the disciples, they were sorrowful. They were like, what the hell? You understand? Now watch this. Get Luke 22 verse 1. Luke 22 verse 1. The book of Luke, chapter 22 verse 1. Uh -huh. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which mm -hmm. is called the Passover. So that's what we read in Matthew 26. Read on. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, mm. for they feared the people. So the reason why they didn't kill the people and they didn't kill Christ at that time is because they were afraid of the people. You understand? Read on. But they already put out a heat on him. Read then entered Satan into Judah, into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, mm. be, being of the number of the twelve. That's why it says in Acts, it says, also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Because Judas Iscariot, what, what was he? He was a disciple, he was an apostle. He was an apostle. He had spiritual power. You understand? So the, then entered Satan into Judas, saying him Iscariot, being one of the twelve. 
being of the number of the 12. Because you have to ask yourself, like, how did Judah, how did Satan enter into Judah as well? Judas was an apostle. How did that happen? I mean, here you are, you're working with the Son of God, right? Okay. You walk with the Son of Christ, you walk with the Son of God. But Satan is still one managed to, to, uh, to enter into you. Because Judas Iscariot did not repent. While the Son of God was right there, he didn't confess, you know what, I'm dealing with this. How do I overcome this thing? He didn't do it. He did not do that thing. Judas Iscariot, he didn't do it. You understand? So, guess what? That's why Satan was able to enter into him. Why? Because Judas Iscariot did not apply the scripts. He did it. He knew the precepts, but he didn't apply them. You understand? He knew the precepts, but he did not apply any of them. So that's why Satan was able to enter into him. Okay? Read on, verse 4. Come on. Verse 4. And mm -hmm. he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. How he might betray him unto them. So you notice, you see, what, you see they, they, they're using that word again that we read in Matthew 26. It says, how he might betray him unto them. Because he was doing it to, to please the chief priests and the scribes. To betray the son of God. Because the spirit of betrayal is the spirit of being offended. When you are offended, you are, going, you are a betrayer. Yeah. If you're offended, guess what? You are a Judas. Because why are you offended? Don't you believe in the son of the, the son of man? The scripture says what it says. Apply it. How do you take offense to a scripture and you start causing offenses in the congregation because when you don't want to repent? How does that work? Isn't it that you know that this is medicine? When it goes out, it's not going to taste nice when it comes out. But it's good for you. When I instead you take offense at the medicine, you understand? But you don't, you, you take offense at the medicine. If you're offended at the medicine, you're not going to drink it. I give you know the medicine is going to be bitter. So why drink it? Why drink in the medication knowing that it's, it's bitter? It's not that you don't know it's going to heal you. You do know. But because it doesn't taste nice, you rather be you rather be in your sin. Because you're in your sin, you will, you will make sure that everybody else also, they get touched. They, that demon that is on you, you want also them to be jumped, that demon to jump on them. That's not loving your neighbor as yourself. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Hmm. Read verse 4 again. Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 4. Go ahead. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. Come on. And they were glad. They were what? And covered. And they were glad. They were glad. One thing I want you brothers and sisters to understand is that Brothers and or sisters that like to cause offenses in the congregation because they are offended. They cannot take responsibility or accountability. When, guess what? They just, they in their minds, they are waiting because they think we're going to fall. They think this is not going to grow. You understand? They think it's not going to grow. So they are biding their time. They are just about, they are just sitting there. Some go, you go to camp with us, but you don't really believe or this camp is going to grow. You don't believe it because you don't read the scriptures. You don't have the spirit of patience on you. Or you know what? We're going to grow. And we are growing. Don't get it because we know, me, I know where we come from. So we are growing. All praise to the Lord. But one thing I want to show you is that some brothers, they don't believe that because they judge with their eyes. They don't use the scriptures they judge with their physical eyes. You understand? So because that's the spirit they move in, when we 
it appears okay, but we're not growing because here's another thing. If you are used to, if you are on YouTube, TikTok, watching all these other camps all over the earth and all, because there's many of them. There's major, major camps with hundreds of thousands of people. You look at them, you look at us. Guess what you're going to do? You will disrespect what the Lord is doing. here. You will. It's not a matter of if or maybe, no, it's a, it's a fact. You are going to disrespect the leadership that is the Lord is setting up and you are going to disrespect what the Lord is building here. You're going to do it because you think your disrespect is justified because we are a small fry. You're watching those camps out there. They are huge. There are thousands of them. You are looking at this no small fry, but you dumb as hell. We are all building the 12 tribes of Israel. We can go home. This is the reason why Negroes are not given positions of authority. Why? Because they are built to destroy from within. You see that thing? Me, I don't care about that. I care about what the scripture says. The Lord says, labor, push. He says, I'm going to give the increase. You just do what this Bible is saying. You understand? So, but guess what? Read verse 5 again. I'm going to show you the spirit that sits on a, ne a manipulative Negro. Read verse 5 again. Okay. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 5. Read. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. Mm, you see that? He was a hireling. They were glad. They were happy that he's willing to betray his own brothers. You understand? They were glad that he's willing to do that for a price. That's why I always say, some of you, you're only here because the thing that you're looking for, you have not received it yet. Once you get it, you're going to disappear. That's the spirit of Judas Iscariot. Okay, go ahead. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. You see that thing? As a, it says he promised and sought opportunity. Where did we just read that? He sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Let's go back. Sirach chapter 19. Verse 28. We read it earlier. Okay. Because Sirach spoke about that thing. Read that thing again. Sirach 19. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 19. Verse 28. Read. For if for want of power he be hindered from sinning. Read. Yet when he findeth opportunity, he will do evil. That's exactly what Judas Iscariot did. When he found opportunity, he did evil. He says he will find that opportunity to do evil. You understand? So that's what Judas Iscariot did. That's what Sirach is explaining here. He's, he's not saying he might. No, he will do it. He's going to do it. You understand? The spirit of manipulation, it goes deep. You understand? I'm going to do part two about this thing. Now watch this. Now give me, jump down to, go back to Luke now. Read Luke 22. Now read verse 9. No, no, Luke 22, verse 20. Luke 22 and verse 22. The book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 22. Go ahead. And truly the Son of Man goeth, as it were determined, mm -hmm. but unto that man by whom he is betrayed. You see what Christ is saying? He says, war unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Meaning what? Betrayal. Betrayal is a serious offense in the Bible. That's why Christ keeps mentioning it over and over. And the reason that why you get offended is because why? You don't apply. When the scripture come out, you always get offended. You all, when, Every scripture that come out is a personal attack against you. Every scripture that is brought out, the class that go out, you, your anger, your anger, your, 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 your hatred, and you, you being offended, it just keeps building up slowly, like an hourglass. You see that? It keeps building up slowly, 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 until you will pop like a popcorn. It's not a matter of if, it will happen. You understand? It's going to happen. Okay. 
because you don't apply to get rid of the garbage. That's why there's garbage collection in the community. Because if they, we people just keep putting garbage up in the, in the garbage cans, what's going to happen in the community? It's going to smell. There will be a stench. It will be smelling funky up in there. So imagine you don't depend. Is all this is is like is called is like spiritual, spiritual, um, spiritual garbage. Yeah, that's a spiritual garbage. You are collecting garbage all over spiritual, and now it starts to spill over to what to the nobility of your kindred. It starts to spill over. Again, it doesn't get emptied out. You're not emptying it. You keep adding to it. Eventually, it's going to overflow. So who is it going to fall onto? Your brother, your sister. That's what's going to happen. Okay, now watch this. Um, let's get, go back to X. I'm going to speed it up now. Go back to X, Trent. The book of X. Chapter 20, verse 30. Come on. Also of your own selves shall men arise, mm -hmm. speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. To draw away disciples after them. So they were speaking perverse things. What were the perverse things that were speaking? I'm just, I'm I'm just going to give some examples, right? The perverse things goes into the perversion of the scriptures. Give me Galatians 1. Galatians 1, verse 6. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 6. Read. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. And to another gospel. This another gospel is the philosophy and imaginations of men. The job of this philosophy and imagination of men is to do what, what we're going to read in the next verse. Read the next verse. Which, which is not another, mm -hmm. but, there, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You see that thing? So the whole objective is to pervert the gospel of Christ, to stain and destroy and defile and put doubt in your mind about what you've learned. Or what you are learning. You understand? They are pervert, the whole point is to pervert the gospel of Christ. Because the gospel is in your head, which is God's laws. You're supposed to apply it. The minute they give you something else to go contrary to that, guess what? They are perverting the gospel of Christ that has been taught, that is, is being taught to you this day. You understand? So what did the Lord command us that we must do? Because there were certain men that crept in into Israel and they were the ones that were perverting the gospel of Christ. It happened in the church of Galatia. You understand? Watch this. Give me Acts 15 verse 1. Acts chapter 15 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 15 verse 1. Read. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the man of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Now here, there was, a, there was an argument, you understand, in the church. There was an argument going on here in the church. So what we read in Acts 1 in, in, in Galatians 1 verse 6 and 7 is something, is the same thing that was going on during this time as well. When Paul and Barnabas were going over to different churches to teach. And there would be wicked Negroes that will come behind them or some will come before they come to pervert the brethren and, and the sisters over there to take away the true gospel of Christ in them that they have learned. You understand? So it says, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren. So that means they went to the churches to teach the brethren, right? You would think that's a good thing. Okay. And what did they say? Except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. This is what they were teaching. If you are not circumcised according to the law of Moses, you will not receive salvation. That is what they were teaching. I'm bringing this out. I'm giving this. I'm bringing this out as an example of how they were perverting the gospel. 
You understand? They were perverting scriptures, what they mean, for their own agenda and purposes. Watch this. Get that in, um, get Leviticus 12. Okay? Leviticus 12, because when were you supposed to be circumcised according to the men of Moses? Leviticus 12, read verse 2. The book of Leviticus, chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a, ma if a woman have, have conceived seed and born a man child, Mom. then shall she then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of her separation for in for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. So now he's letting you know, or okay, um, a woman gives birth, you understand, can you give birth to a boy, and says she's going to be unclean seven days, okay, and then read verse eight, read verse three. So we see what happens on the third, on the on the eighth day to this boy. Come on. In the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So after the man of Moses, you must be circumcised on what day? The eighth day. Now go back to X 15, verse 1 again. The book of the book of X, chapter 15, verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the man of Moses, he cannot be saved. You see what they were saying? They said, except you be, except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. So think about this. You've got mothers, I mean, you've got fathers, you've got uncles, you've got brothers. You understand? Old and young. So that means that the older ones, the, 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 the fathers that were not circumcised, the uncles that were not circumcised, the brothers that were not circumcised, you understand? The children that were not circumcised. That means all of them were not eligible for deliverance, for salvation. That's what these Negroes was teaching. They're saying, except you were circumcised after the men of Moses on the third day, listen, salvation is not open for you. So that means you can imagine that almost more than half, more than the whole church had to just say, you know what, what's the point then? Why should we be here knowing that salvation is not open to us? You see that? That's how they were pervading the gospel. They were manipulating scriptures. That's what I'm trying to show you here. You understand? They were manipulating scriptures. Now watch this. Now give me Galatians 2 verse 4. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 4. Wait. Right. You know what? Start of verse 3. Start of verse 3. Let's read verse 3. Go ahead. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So Titus is the Titus that we read about in the book of Titus. It says who was with Paul, it says, being a Greek, meaning he grew up in Greek customs. So he wasn't circumcised. He wasn't circumcised because he grew under Greek customs. Get that in 1 Maccabees 1, verse 49. 1 Maccabees 1, 49. Because this is what, this was the law under the Greeks. Okay, read them. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 49. Read. You know what? Read verse 48 and 49 together. First book of Maccabees, chapter 48. Chapter 1, verse 48. That they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profanation. You see what they were doing? They were making sure that our children were not circumcised because that's what they were doing at the consent of our own people that that what that assimilated into greek culture okay read to the end they might forget the law and change all the ordinances and change all the ordinances of of our laws at the understanding of our laws how to apply it. 
So these wicked Negroes, they were doing the same thing that the Greeks was doing, perverting the gospel. So now they were causing a whole lot of confusion in the church. Now go back, Galatians 2. Read verse 3 again. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Well, Titus was like, oh, so, I mean, I'm not going to circumcise because I wasn't circumcised the eighth day, like it says in Moses, based on how you teaching this. That's what they were saying. That's why Titus was like, to hell with this. Okay, next verse. Come on. So what were they doing? They were not sparing the flock. That's what I want you to understand. Read. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, mm -hmm. who, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in, in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. You see what the Lord is saying? You see what Christ is, uh, you see what the Apostle Paul is saying right there? He said, listen, be, and that because of false brethren, unawares brought in. These false brethren were the ones that were teaching that except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. Meaning salvation is not open for you. So now these were false brethren. What were they doing? They were not sparing the flock. You understand? They came into what he says, came in privily to spy out our liberty. Meaning the grace that we have in Christ. Meaning we have a chance at this. We have a chance at getting the kingdom. But now they were what? They were blocking the people to receive the kingdom by taking them back to Moses, the law of animal sacrifice. That's what they were doing. You understand? Manipulating scriptures. So what I'm trying to show you here is the apostle Paul is explaining what these are things that will happen in these last days. Also of your own selves. Read on, verse 5. Come on. To whom we can place by subjection Mm -hmm. No, not for an hour that the truth of that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. He says, don't entertain them, but they must be rebuked. That's what the apostle Paul is going into here. You understand? Because in their heads, they believe they are somewhat when they are not. So now that's why they have to come in privily. That's why they have to what? They use scriptures to manipulate. Hey, brother, you know, this scripture means this. This scripture. But you, because you are new, you don't understand what this brother is trying to do. Or you just naive. You don't possibly think that the brother can what can supplant you. Just to destroy you, to take you out this truth. The same way we see it when we teach on the streets. Some, a brother or sister comes, they genuinely want to hear the word. Here comes Satan. They immediately come to take away the word. The same thing that can happen outside when we go out to teach our people that don't know this truth. The same thing happens in here. So don't be sleeping, thinking that every brother is up to your is for your own interest. Why? Because they can take you out just the same way they, that Satan that comes immediately can take away the word from a sister or brother that comes to camp to learn. That's what you brothers don't understand. You need to understand the sisters as well. Okay. That's what the apostle Paul is trying to show us here. Okay. Now watch this. Go back to Acts 15. Read verse 2 now. Book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 2. Read. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elder and el elders about this question. He says, you know what? Because remember, he says there was much, there was, there was, it says, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. Meaning what? There was arguing. There was argument. There were back and forth going on in the church because of those wicked Negroes that crept in unawares to spy out our liberty. So now there's confusion in the church. Now they're like, you know what? We need to go to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this situation right here so that we can clear this up. Because the people that came to teach us, they come from Judea. Jerusalem. Keep that in mind. Keep reading. Verse 3. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the, of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. 
this is now, this is the ministry of Paul and Barnabas when they were traveling. You understand? They, were, they went to Phoenicia, which is Phoenicia, okay, and Samaria, declaring con the, the conversion of the Gentiles, Northern Kingdom, that they caused, and there's what? And caused great joy unto all the brethren. But watch this. Um, keep reading. Read verse 4. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. Meaning what? The conversion of the Gentiles back to what? The, the conversion of the Gentiles to Christ. Read. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed mm -hmm. that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. You see what he's saying? He says, but they rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed. These Pharisees didn't believe. But they made it seem like they believed. The proof of that is the next part of the verse saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Was it necessary for them to circumcise them? No, it wasn't. Because why? Because Christ... Now we must what? We must keep the commandments under Christ. So it was not needful for them to be circumcised. And we're talking about what? The ones that never been circumcised, they are old now. How else are they going to be circumcised? Because they are no longer eight days old. Some are 60, 70, 40 years old, 30 years old. So why are they saying it was needful for them to circumcise them? and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So they, were, they wanted to take them back to animal sacrifice. So what were they doing? Rejecting the Messiah. That's what they were doing. They were rejecting the Son of God. Okay, read on. Verse, um, verse 6, read. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. You see that thing? Meaning to sit down and discuss it like men, like adults, like land men, to make sure that they make full proof of the ministry and also to make sure that no wicked Negro will come there and say, I'm going to teach. The, the apostles came up with a plan. Watch this. Jump down to verse 19. The book of Acts chapter 15, verse 19. You know what? Read verse 22. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and mm -hmm. Silas, chief men among the brethren. You see what they did? They said, listen, after they discussed the matter, what we read from verse 1 to verse 6, they say, listen, we're going to sort this thing out. After they, they discussed it, they say, okay, going forward, here's what we're going to do. It says, then please eat the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch. Because that was the problem. That's where the problem was at Antioch. With Paul and Barnabas, name and what? It says, with Paul and Barnabas, named Judas, saying him Barsabbas. And Silas, chief men among the brethren, meaning brothers that were well versed in the scriptures. They say, okay, we're going to send them over there. You understand? To make sure no wicked Negroes come up in there to come and cause confusion. Okay? That's why I tell you, brothers, you're still learning, make sure, seek counsel, understand what the scriptures mean, ask relevant questions when it comes to the script, the understanding of the script. What does this mean? What does that mean? How does that, does this precept goes along with that? I'll tell you, no, it doesn't go with that. It doesn't make sense. Oh yes, it does go with that one. You have to do that. So you can understand. So why? So that there's no wicked nigra. That master manipulator is going to come and be surveilling you, whispering in your ear and say, oh, I found this precept. You understand? We're going to, me, I'm making full proof of this ministry. I don't want no BS. Mm -mm. No, because the apostle, the book of Acts is telling us how we must move and how we must, what we must avoid. That's what we read, we're reading it. Things that are written at four time. Okay, keep reading. Verse 23, read. 
and they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the church, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. You see what they did? They say, okay, next time, here's what, how we're going to solve the problem. We're going, to, the, we're going to send you chosen men that understand the scriptures. But what they will do is they will come with letters that was written by us, the apostles. And those letters are going to indicate what doctrine is going to be taught and when it's going to be taught. You see what they did? They came up with a plan. So that before they are going to be taught, they already know what's coming, number one. Two, they know when it's coming. And they know who's coming to teach them. They say, if anybody just shows up and say, okay, I'm going to do it, where's the letter? They don't, they, they are, those are not, they are not us. They are not with us, you understand? Because they are going contrary to what we teach. Read on. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, Stop right subverting there. your soul. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Read verse 21, verse 24 again. I want you to see this. Okay. The wait. book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words. Stop right there. You see that part right there? It said uh, that certain which went out from us troubled you with words. Meaning, these Negroes was with us. This Negro, this Negro or Negroes was among us. They broke bread with us. They, some of us know our kids. You understand? Some of us been to our houses. Some of them. You see, it says that, it says that certain which went out from us Traveled you with words. So they used to be with us. Now they say, you know what? To hell with this. But guess what? You can be here and still have the same spirit. You understand? Some of you think we're stupid. Some of you think we're dumb. You think I can't see through it. Me, I'm not going to spend time on you. Why? Because there's, there's a mission here. With that. We have a mission. We are on a mission. We have a mission. The mission is to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? That's the mission. But we will address, I will address these type of things to make you brothers and sisters to be on alert. Alert level one. Okay? Now, read that part again, verse 24. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words. Right? Subverting your souls. Mm. Saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It says we never gave such commandment to, to nobody. We never told nobody to come and teach them. That was as to whom we gave no such commandment. We never told, I never told that Negro to say that. You understand? I never said nobody, no, you must say this, you must. I never told you that. Where did you get that stuff from? That's what the apostles are saying here. That's why they came up with a plan to deal with that matter because there was a problem in the church and it had to be resolved. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. So that's why I tell you, brothers, brother come to you, be whispering in your ear with some precept that is, if, no, I found this precept. Hold on, okay, what does it say? What does it mean? Break it down for us. What does it say? Yeah, but that didn't come out in class. Hmm? You see that thing? What does verse 1 say? Because I know the mind of the Negro, right? What does the whole chapter talk about? You know what the Negro will do? The Negro will do this, right? He will say, okay, so the only way for me to hide I have to just, whatever, whatever precept I come up with, I must read the whole chapter just so that I can make sure that in case the brother or sister that I'm going to come to with this, if they ask me, 
I can explain to them what's going on in the chapter. But here's the problem with that. He does not have the spiritual fortitude. He does not have the spiritual stones to sit down and read the Bible and apply what is written so he can be able to do what? To give a proper breakdown and understanding. He doesn't have that. So he won't do it. Because if he has to now study, apply, go over scriptures, you understand? Study. And I'm talking study. Application. That takes a, that takes a different spirit. If you are faking it, you won't do it. You won't do it just so you can cover your bases. You're not going to do that. You will not do it. Because me, I understand that. I, I know the mind of the Negro. Okay? Now, hmm. how must we deal with such situation? Give me that in Titus 1 verse 9. Because the apostles gave us their answers here. But I want to show you some more what the apostle Paul said. Titus 1 verse 9. Read that. I'm almost done. The book of Titus chapter 1 verse 9. Holding fast the fruitful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. You see what he's saying? So when it says what? And it says, holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught. Like what's going on right now. You see, he says that he says that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Go ahead. Verse 10. Come on. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, mm -hmm. especially they that are of circumcision. Especially they of the circumcision. Remember I said, keep that, go back to Acts 15 verse 1, so we regain the thought. Okay. The book of Acts, chapter 15 verse 1. Read. Right? And certain men, which came down from Judea, taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the man of Moses, he cannot be saved. You see where they were coming from? Judea. So this is Southern Kingdom. Certain men which came down from Judea. This is Judah here. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Mainly Judah. Go back. Titus 1 now. Okay, verse 10. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially mm -hmm. they of the circumcision. You see, I think especially they of the tribe of Judah. It says, for there are many unruly and vain talkers. They are unruly, meaning what? They hate instruction. They hate correction. When they get corrected, they become stubborn. They become offended. They start to cause offenses in the body. Problems. Vain talkers. They just speak out of turn. They are not in the spirit. Okay? Deceivers, meaning manipulators. They will manipulate you especially they of the circumcision, they of Judah. Because they were, this is something kingdom is talking about here. Go ahead. Whose mouths must be stopped. Whose mouth must be stopped. Meaning what? Shut the hell up. Go ahead. Who subvert whole houses. They will subvert whole houses, spiritual houses that come in here, that the Lord is building. Okay, come on. Teaching things which they ought not. You see that thing, For teaching things they ought not. The scripture says, speak young men, if they be in need of thee. Teaching things that they're not supposed to be teaching. Read. For filthy lucre's sake. You see that thing, for filthy lucre's sake. Meaning what? Position, some kind of a status. Read. Because they don't understand. It's not about the position. It's not about the title. It's about the work that you are doing. Your work will tell you a title. It's very simple equation. Read. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, mm -hmm. the Christians are always liars. Read. Evil beasts. Come on. Sl slow bellies. You see what he's saying? It says, one, it says one of them, even one of themselves, meaning the Judite, those of the circumcision, it says, even a prophet of their own. 
said, remember these are false prophets, but even there's not even honor among them. It says, the Christians, meaning in Crete, Crete is in Greece. The Christians are always liars, meaning they lie. Remember I said, they lie, they manipulate. You understand? Are always liars. Evil beasts, meaning this is a this is a monster, he's a full demon. Slow babies, meaning they are dumb as hell. You understand? Read. Verse 13, come on. This witness is true. Mm -hmm. Wherefore rebuke them that wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. You see what the Bible is saying? Read verse 13 again. Come on. The book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 13. Come on. This witness is true. Mm -hmm. Wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. That's why this, these classes like this, they come out. Why? That they may be what? That they may be sound in the faith. If that's what they want. If they don't, they want to continue and the Lord will pop them out and they will leave. And we will praise the Lord and keep it moving. Because we want progress. We want to progress because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the Lord is saying, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. That's why classes like this, listen, I'm very passionate about these things because, listen, Negroes, mentally, spiritually, they are, they are being to destroy from within. That's why Christ says, you come in here, you must be born again. Because if you don't change your way of life, your spiritual growth, you are going to destroy everything here we're trying to build. We're not going to have that. The mission is a goal, with or without you. Whether you do evil and all of that, you think you're not going to be seen, it's not going to stop the train. The train is in motion already. Understand that thing. Okay? So I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praises to the Lord.